Why would you become vitamin D deficient? Well, if you're not a sun person, if you like to stay indoors, or if you're just too old or too sick to get out under the sun, you will develop vitamin D deficiency easily. Now, I'm not saying go get yourself burned out there under the sun, because sun can also create sun damage, can make you look older faster, uh, can give you melanoma and other cancers. So you have to be careful about that. Always wear sunscreen, but you have to have a little bit of a sun exposure. My weekends, I am always out doing water sports. I think I'm gonna look old fast, but it's an addiction I can't give up, so what can you do? The bottom line is, if you have a darker skin like mine, uh, actually you're a little bit higher risk because when you have a darker skin, it's kind of an advantage against the sun damage, but it may not be a great advantage when it comes to producing vitamin D under your skin. So if you didn't know, a lot of vitamin D is produced under your skin, under the ultraviolet lights. Now, we don't recommend tanning beds either because we don't know the safety of these UV lights that you guys go just to get a tan under the tanning bed. Yes, your vitamin D levels may go up, but you may die from cancer. So, not a good way. Again, you know, we always tell people, if you're vitamin D deficient, I don't really recommend going to the beach and get yourself roasted. If it's a lifestyle, if you're at the beach, if you're doing things outdoor, great. But if not, definitely do not just expose yourself out there, if, especially if you're not used to it. Vitamin D replacement, which we'll talk about in a minute. So what are the signs and symptoms of a vitamin D deficiency? How do you know you can be vitamin D deficient? Now, vitamin D test is very interesting. In the United States, especially here, when we order a vitamin D test, patients may get a bill telling that your doctor ordered vitamin D for nothing. Well, that pisses me off all the time. And I'm like, okay, patient has this symptom, that symptom. Sometimes they don't even accept that. So we have to go by their books and see what they like. But if you tell your doctor what you're feeling, your doctor may be able to choose the appropriate code so you don't get a bill for a, the freaking vitamin D test, which can cost you uh, upwards of hundreds of dollars, which hard to understand. In the United States, everything is freaking expensive. All right, so you can be getting sick a lot. Now, vitamin D has been shown actually to induce macrophages, which is the first defenders in your body. Now, what kind of vitamin D do you need, right? So studies show that if you're really, really deficient, like below 10 vitamin D, that can really be a problem. But if you are between 20 and 30, that's not really that bad. Above 30 is really desirable. But the bottom line is you don't want to also go overboard and go have a vitamin D of 100. So it's really, I think, the sweet spot of a vitamin D is around 30 to 40 and maybe 50. But there is really no benefit of going above 50. And I found a study actually that says that too much vitamin D can increase the risk of mortality. Now, too little vitamin D can increase uh, the risk of mortality as well, like we discuss all the time. Too little of something and too much of something is never good. That's like a principle that should be a principle in your life. Any addiction is not good. Anything of too little, too much is not good. So you have to find a balance. I think the sweet spot for vitamin D is 30 to 40. Let's move on. So as a result, you know, if you are vitamin D deficient severely, your body may not be able to respond to pathogens and the viruses and the bacteria as good as it does normally when you're vitamin D replete. Now, secondly, you may be feeling very tired and run down if you do not have vitamin D. Now, again, we said about this, we talked about this. Vitamin D is a hormone. It has major functions in your mitochondria which is the energy producing factory. It has major function in mitochondria. As a result, people with vitamin D e deficiency suffer from muscle weakness. That's why people who stay indoor, they get more and more immobile. They start aching all over the place and their bones even uh, can start hurting. It can be like even tender to touch. So you squeeze their bone a little bit like this. They're like, oh my God, it hurts because vitamin D is very important for your bones. What is the function of vitamin D? Primary function of vitamin D is actually to get the calcium from your intestinal system and keep a balanced 
calcium levels in your blood. Calcium levels are so important that if you have a very little calcium or too much calcium, actually too much calcium can literally put you in coma and too little calcium can literally trigger a rhythm problem that can stop your heart. So balancing, keeping the balance of calcium in your blood is extremely important. So when you do not have enough vitamin D, what happens? The other hormones kick in. Saying that this guy is not doing his job or he's not even at work anymore. So I'm going to have someone in kicking in to get the job done. We call that parathyroid hormone. So as a result, a lot of people with vitamin D deficiency, you can see that their parathyroid hormone is high. So then some doctors will think that there's something wrong with that person's parathyroid hormone regulation. But actually, the problem is with vitamin D. So if your parathyroid hormone is high and your calcium is normal, that is because parathyroid is borrowing calcium from your bone and putting into the blood because your blood calcium has to be tightly regulated. Now what happens as a result, your bones will suffer from that. Your bones is basically giving out calcium. So vitamin D is there. There is no need for parathyroid. So your bones are happy. Your muscles are happy because the mitochondria needs vitamin D and so forth. So if you're suffering from muscle and bone pains, if you're suffering from osteoporosis or fragile bones, if you're having fractures, definitely you have to immediately replete, replace your vitamin D levels ASAP. Now, number three is insulin resistance. Of course, insulin resistance have a lot of reasons, but if you're vitamin D deficient, you're not really helping yourself. I'm not saying if you just take vitamin D, you're magically will lose weight and the whole insulin resistance will go away, but it will help it. Is it 5% of it, 10% of it? I don't know, not that the studies know. But the studies show that people who are having very low vitamin D are typically insulin resistant. Typically they are more obese, overweight, it's a risk factor. So we don't know which one is chicken and egg, but we know that vitamin D deficiency may have a role in insulin resistance. And ironically, uh, some of my patients will report that if they take vitamin D, they feel better, maybe muscle function gets better, Better, maybe they move more whatever the reason whatever that it, the vitamin D does to mitochondria and then the insulin resistance definitely has a good significant role so make sure your vitamin D levels are more than 30 if you have diabetes and insulin resistance that's extremely common among insulin resistant and diabetic patients again that's why a lot of diabetic patients tend to have more bone fractures tend to have more infections so vitamin D being protective against infections, against bone fractures, definitely will help you to avoid some of the complications that come with diabetes. Now the next is depression. So as you know, depression is super common. Like, you know, you look right, somebody's depressed. You look rough, somebody's depressed. It's kind of, everybody has some problems going on. Well, I didn't blame them. You can be depressed. You have the right to be depressed, but you don't want to necessarily ignore yourself and just let things go. And let me talk about B12 in another video that can cause depression, but this vitamin, vitamin D is also has been associated with depression. Now, if you take vitamin D, will your depression magically go away? I'm not sure about that. The studies are not sure about that either, but there is definitely an association between low vitamin D and depression. Now, we discussed about before, you know, people with low vitamin D, they tend to be indoor, they tend to be sicker, they tend to be more overweight, and those people tend to be more depressed too. So is this that or some other thing? We don't really know. But again, if you're depressed, definitely, you know, if you have the initiative for that, uh, at least if you care about yourself a little bit, make sure, you know, your vitamin D levels are fair enough too. And the next thing is the impaired wound healing. So some of you with diabetes either already developed a wound from neuropathy or will develop some wound in the future. God forbid, if you do not keep your sugars under control and neuropathy gets worse and worse, eventually something may happen. Now... If that happens, you know it's challenging to treat. So it's challenging to treat the wound infections, especially with diabetes, because your immune system is down. And as we discussed, vitamin D 
helps your immune system a lot. So if you have vitamin D deficiency, studies show that people who are vitamin D deficient have delayed wound healing. So make sure your vitamin D is good enough. Now, one more thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, hair loss. Now, I get a lot of patients who come in for hair loss. They think that their thyroid is, uh, is wrong or something is wrong with them. The things that I check commonly for hair loss is vitamin D number one. I check their iron levels, I check their zinc levels, B12 levels, or the biotin levels. So we do that, and vitamin D deficiency is one of the most common things that I find in people who have hair loss. Now, how do you get vitamin D? You can get the vitamin D in supplements. Most people need at least a thousand units of replacement. Uh, if you're deficient, you can go upwards of 2,000 of or 5,000 every day to get your levels to a reasonable level. There are a pharmaceutical approach to that. You know, we sometimes give 50,000 units if people cannot take or cannot remember taking a vitamin every day, then we just give them 50,000 units once a week. That's not forever because 50,000 can add up quite a bit. So after a certain amount of months, like three months, six months, we recheck their vitamin D levels and we tell them to take, hey, you know, vitamin D is a, is a stored vitamin. So if you're taking, you know, in a week, so it can be once a week or it can be a couple times a week. But if your total dose is around 5,000 to 10,000 uh, units of vitamin D, you are going to be able to maintain your vitamin D pretty well. But if your levels are down to five or eight or something like that, you may need that mega dose to get your levels up there fairly quickly so that, you know, you can uh, get where you want to be and then just maintain it. So I think that's the end of the video, guys. If you liked it, please share, please give a like and write a comment. We'll appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video.